Hello, everybody. It's me, Carmine DiStefano, the Bookman. They call him the Bookman. His rant's never ending. He's angry and he's loud and he has a lot of friends. If you have Alyssa Milano's number, you could always send it to Carmine DiStefano, the Bookman. That song don't make no sense. Hello, everybody. It's me, Carmine DiStefano, the Bookman. In 2010, Chris Nolan, you know, the Batman guy, put together a little piece about dreaming, reality, and everything in between. He called it Inception. What do we have here? Well, let's take a look at it together, shall we? Movie opens with Leonardo DiCaprio on a beach. He's immediately taken to an obvious Ken Watanabe in old man makeup. Cut to Ken Watanabe as himself, playing a guy named Mr. Saito, being pitched by Leo and Tommy from Third Rock. No, it's pot, I swear, I, I smoke it with my friends. I, I love to toke up on the fat daddies. It seems that way now. They warn Mr. Saito of dream stealers who hack into your dreams and try to take valuable information. He doesn't go along with it, so they try to reformulate a plan. They then see Mal, played by Marion Cortillard. And the answer is... Yes, I would. To keep her from screwing everything up, Dom ties her to a chair, I've had dreams like that before, unfortunately she gets out, then ruins everything anyway. As the interior of this backdrop begins to crumble, it turns out it was all a dream. Instead, Dom, Saito, and Tommy are in the middle of an uprising until that turns out to be a dream. Whose dream exactly? How do you mess up the carpet? It wasn't my fault. You're the architect. Architect? You mean like... I am the architect. I created the Matrix. Since the plan failed, they need to escape before the company that hired them kills them. However, Saito meets up with them. He has a proposition. What do you want from us? Inception. Is it possible? Of course not. If you can steal an idea from someone's mind, why can't you plant one there instead? Now, doesn't that sound a little complex? I'd rather go with this method. You do! I don't! You do! I don't! You do! I don't! You don't! I do! You don't! I do! You don't! Despite Tommy's debate, Dom goes along with his plan. He needs help from his father, played by Michael Caine. They just design the levels and teach them to the dreamers, that's all. Design it yourself. Ma won't let me. Take it. They'll hate you for it, but that's the point of Batman. This is Dom's father, who has a prospect for the job. We're talking Ellen Page. Cause Ellen Page looks like she's getting a master's degree in something cognitive, doesn't she? I'd still know though. After showing her puzzle-producing prowess, Dom recruits her by taking her through her own little dream she created. Amongst all the little nuances, rules, and boundaries given to her, Ellen runs into a happy mall. By happy, I mean murderous. After that, Dom recruits a dream forger, as well as this drug dude that's got a hot narcotic that keeps people under for a long time. Dom takes a ride on this freaky shit to see Mall. We then find out Saito's mark who happens to be the son of a powerful businessman who is played by Cillian Murphy? I mean, what is this? A Batman Begins reunion? Well, I already know what he'll say. That we should kill you. His dying father is picking between giving his son the fortune or his son's godfather, played by Tom Berenger, depending on which one he feels would be more adequate. While they're training, Ellen Page learns Dom stays late at the office. She then slips into Dom's dream. It includes all of these past memories of his wife and children. 
He tells her all about it until she sneaks off and comes across the main room. What are you doing here? Well, I was just looking for you, baby. I'll continue on. Mal, being as happy as she is, goes into attack mode again. Knowing Dom's freaked out, Ellen asks to be part of the crew. He welcomes her aboard. Now they have to travel on a plane for 10 hours with the son of the businessman. The whole idea is to implant an idea in his head that will make him give the company away to environmentalists. Everyone then takes their drugs to travel into the first dream sequence. Right away they see... Train! They are then attacked by trained figments of the imagination meant to stop them from attacking thoughts. Alas, Saito is shot. You'd think his death in the dream world would wake him up to the real world, however... It won't wake him up. What do you mean it won't wake him up? It won't him wake up. him when up. When we die in a dream, we wake up. Not from this. We're too heavily sedated to wake up that way. Right, so what happens when we die? I drop into limbo. Are you serious? Limbo? Limbo! Hey! Everyone loves a good limbo! <laughs> they have to move quickly in this inception. They use scare tactics to get a safe combination from the sun which they can use further into another dream sequence. While they're doing that, Dom tells Ellen about his wife, Mal, the whole story behind her, how they were in a deep dream sequence that she would not wake up from. When he figured out it was all a dream, he tried to convince her to wake up, but she wouldn't do it. When she finally did, she couldn't see reality from the dream world, thereby killing herself thinking it would wake her up. She made it seem as though he was the blame for it, so he abandoned his children to escape the country. Now that that's established, we move into the next dream sequence. Dom convinces the son he is trying to protect him from doing what Dom and his crew is trying to do. He gets the son to remember the number he was using in the combination in the last dream. They then use the mental projection of his godfather to lead him into thinking the godfather's hiding something about the family's inheritance. So now it's time for the dream within the dream within the dream. While trying to track the inner thought safe, the other dreams are beginning to collapse, meaning the third dream state is following suit. Now tell me if this scene looks familiar to you. When Robert the Sun finds his inner thought sanctuary, Ma breaks in to screw everything up again. She kills Robert while Saito dies in this deep dream state. You'd think they'd dream up some bulletproof vests by now. Thereby making the mission a failure. Unless... No, there's still another way. We just have to follow Fisher down there. There's not enough time. No, but there, there will be enough time down there. And we will find him. Okay, as, as soon as Arthur's music kicks in, just use the defibrillator to revive him. We can give him his, his own kick down below. So a dream within a dream within a dream within a dream? Okay. To dream the impossible dream. To fight the unbeatable foe. Dom takes Ellen to alternate reality that he and Maul created long ago. He finds Maul in their virtual house, asking him to stay. Turns out she has Robert in her grasp. Dom locates Robert, then reveals how he ruined everything by using Inception on her. This is how he knew Inception could work. He then leaves her behind to get Saito, who's lost in limbo, as we saw earlier in the movie. Robert is then brought back to the third tier dream to open the safe to find a projection of his father who gives him the will along with his love and support to sell the company's assets to Green Industries. 
In the first dream state, he tells the Forge Godfather he will do as such. Dom rescues Saito from Limbo to make it all happen officially. Dom then awakens on the plane with all of his crew intact, including, of course, Robert. Saito makes the calls so that Dom can return back to his homeland, meet his father, reunite with his kids, before we are left to wonder if this is at all real. And that's pretty much it. So what did I think of this movie? To tell you the truth, I liked it better with Neo, Trinity, Morpheus, the Agents, Melvin G, and those crazy ghost guys. Seriously, folks, it's the fucking Matrix. From the broad ideals to the distinct specifics. The only difference is it is way more convoluted in the sense that a dream is nothing tangible. It is not some sort of physical manifestation you can travel in. You cannot have someone mentally strong enough to establish a setting in their subconscious minds that everyone else can be a part of. You can utilize to fool people into opening inner thoughts and whatever. It's just way beyond reality. At least with The Matrix, it was a computer program. Though it's hard to grasp that it could actually happen, it's still somewhat tangible. This is just traveling through unconscious images formulated from involuntarily subconscious constructs. It cannot be done. I know in movies you have to suspend disbelief, but this is pushing it a little too far. I'll give credit for utilizing Descartes' philosophical real-world dream world paradox, but seriously, you took an idea that had already been done not too long ago and pushed it over the edge. I mean, it would be equivalent to traveling through someone's soul to make them fall in love with someone. It can't be done. Now, before everyone has a fucking heart attack, I want to make this point clear. I thought it was a good movie. It had quality writing and quality performances. You do have to question Ellen Page and Joseph Gordon-Levitt's roles in this because they seem to be a little bit too young looking to be a season is what they're doing. But aside from all that, everyone was well casted. I liked how Christopher Nolan was able to take a two and a half hour movie and make it feel like an hour and 20 minutes. It moves very quickly. Everything is explained well enough that you can keep up with it the first time. This whole idea that you have to see it eight times just to figure out what's going on is not true. He made sense of what was going on in front of you, to the point where you might miss one thing here or one thing there, but that is not why you're going to watch it again. You'll watch it again because of its entertainment value, not to figure it out. I give him a lot of credit for that. This was a very hard storyline to keep track of if you're not paying attention. Be that as it may, he made it easy to pay attention to, as it was action-packed, well put together, well thought out, more or less, well constructed, a really good movie that I suggest watching. I just didn't think it was the most brilliant, innovative, masterfully clever idea of all time since I could link it back to The Matrix, which came out a few years before. But I do recommend seeing this movie at least once. You're really not going to be disappointed. I thank you all for watching. I have more for you soon to come. So stay tuned, take care, and have a great day.